Hello and welcome back. And do you know what, guys? Today I'm going to answer a very, very simple question. What is NAS? Okay, so it's going to be a real short one today because I'll be honest, I've been looking through the back catalogue of all of the videos on this channel. I was chatting to a mate, Jason, lovely fella. And while we were talking, he actually asked me what exactly it is I do for a living. Why haven't I got a real job and not just talking to people on YouTube? And that's a very good question. But he did raise a very important point. He asked me, what is NAS? What is it, these things that you talk about? What the hell is all this stuff on your desk? It's a very good question. And rather than bore him for the best part of 10 minutes, like I do with you guys every other day, he wanted to know in the most concise, simple terms, what is a NAS? And that's a very good question. Let's face it. Whether you're a business owner that's been told to buy one of these, or maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend, oh, you never know, um, has you know said, I'm going to buy myself a now from Synology, QNAP, WDA, Sistor, any of those brands. And you're wondering, what exactly is it? Is this just some piece of nonsense junk that you're not really going to use? Or is it useful like the telly? A NAS is an alternative to Dropbox. You know things like Google Drive and Dropbox, and you've got all your data on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, whatever you're using. And that data might be incredibly, you know, mission critical if you're a business owner, or it could be pictures of your kids, family, your wedding, photos that are genuinely irreplaceable and genuinely priceless because if they're lost, they're gone. What a NAS does is give you all of the versatility of Google Drive and Dropbox where you can back up all your data offsite, but rather than have it offsite, it's in one centralized location. It's not on a server that's owned by a third party company that can peruse all your data whenever they want it. It's a private alternative to those. So rather than paying, what does Dropbox and Google Drive charge you at the moment? I think it's about five or 10 quid a month for a terabyte of data. You can buy a NAS, fill it with hard drives, and then pay once, and then it's yours to keep. If you use Dropbox or Google Drive and pay that tenner a month, after two years, you've spent 240 pounds, and you've got nothing to show for it, because if you stop paying, they turn your account off and your data's gone. So eventually you're gonna to have to put that data somewhere. And then you're going to have to buy one of these anyway, or buy a hard drive and connect it. Maybe one of those people that's got about 10 USBs knocking around in their house. And you've got all this data distributed everywhere, and you start thinking, have I got about eight copies of that, and I've only got one copy of that. And what the NAS does is centralise all of that data in one place. On top of that, you've got things like RAID protection that are built into NASes, where if you've got multiple hard drives inside a device like this one, and one of the drives dies, uh, and do check out my video about Seagate and drive recovery, um, if that happens, then it's a system inside where, using a system of parity, where it's analysed the data that's on every single disk and keeps a record like a digital bl blueprint. If one of those drives dies, you can pop in a new one and it will rebuild the data from the blueprint and then all your data will be safe. On top of that, a lot of these NAS devices have got uh, their own operating system with their own application for things like Plex, multimedia enjoyment, audio quality and file hosting and more. And these are the things that are built into a NAS for both home and business users. So it's more than a backup tool. Look at um, all those online streaming platforms like Netflix uh, and Amazon Instant, stuff like that. When you enjoy that media, you're kind of stuck with whatever they want to show you. You might be really enjoying seasons one, two, three, four, five, six of something, and then you go, oh great, that's fantastic, let's go to season seven. Oh no, I can't, I've got to buy it. And you might buy it and you've got it long term, but those seasons one through six that you've streamed and paid monthly for, if you stop paying for those streaming prices, you're gonna to have to pay, buy them anyway. What a NAS does is give you all of that fluidity and that great user interface that these site to give you, but on your media, your TV shows. You can do everything from download and record stuff from TV like an episode of EastEnders, why would you? And then stick it on the NAS and you've owned it forever. On top of that, you can also migrate and synchronize your NAS with a third party cloud anyway. So if you're worried about this NAS being in one place, and I'm sure a number of you have watched this and gone, what if it breaks, what if it's stolen? Then on top of that, you can utilize that device and synchronize it with a third party cloud, but fully encrypted. So even if it is on a cloud platform, there's nothing they can do with it because it's got military grade encryption, AESNI encryption. Um, but that's really about it. That's what a NAS is. If you really need to know what a NAS is, it's an alternative to Dropbox, Google Drive and more, but a safer alternative because there is no way those online streaming, uh, the online third party cloud platforms are completely safe because so many people access them at once, it has to be said that they're gonna reuse security algorithms. Everyone's got the same security credential method to log in. So in a way, if they cracked it once, they cracked it for everyone. On top of that, you don't know what's happening with your data 
from these companies in a third party because they could be using it to learn more about you, learn more about your data, or worse still, see and access those files. With a NAS, it's localized, it's in your network environment, and if you don't want anyone to access it, you just pull the cable out the back. You pull the network cable and it's fine. There are just so many ways in which your NAS can be helpful for you. So I just wanted to wrap this video up. Look at that, I'm coming in at six minutes. That's what a NAS is, as simple as possible. If you're watching this out there, Jason, and I hope you are, did this answer your question? Maybe you should put it in the comments. But otherwise, guys, if you're interested in buying a NAS, go to NAS Compares. It's at the uh, message below and all the latest information's there. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you on the next video.